Hello, welcome back to the Friday MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for September 6th. We're going to be going over the 12-game slate today, going over some high-owned pitchers, some pivots to consider, and then going over the stacks, the value stacks, the ceiling stacks, the high-owned stacks, the highest projected stacks. We'll go over it all, break down my thoughts on it, as we head into the first weekend of the NFL season, I will also have a DFS video for the main slate this weekend. That will be out later today as I mull over, you know, the slate a little bit more and try and figure out my thoughts more on uh, for this week one. Now, let's get into the slate. But before we do, come join us at Lion Star. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do. All the props, all the DFS. You get it all. One low price. You get the optimizer, all the tools uh, for all three best ball props and DFS. So let's get into it. Uh, once again, I don't have access to the winning lineups on uh, DraftKings or FanDuel. However, we can still go over the perfect lineup. The perfect lineup on DraftKings. We got Ronaldo Lopez, who was one of my favorite pitchers, if not my favorite one. But then Austin Gomber, which totally took me by surprise. I did not expect him to have that kind of game. But hey, he got it done. This is why it's DFS. It uh, is always... You know, pretty hard to predict what is going to happen from day to day. Now, hitting-wise, two-man Pirate stack, two-man Padre stack, two-man Colorado with a one-off of Parker Meadows hit a grand slam to beat my Padres. It was rough. It hurt. But, uh, hey, it happens. Congrats to the Tigers for not getting swept, and congrats to whoever won on DK. Now on to FanDuel. Perfect lineup, Austin Gomber. Surprising, but uh, he got it done. And then we had a two-man Colorado stack and all one-offs from there. So now let's get into today's slate and uh, see what we got going here. I'll go over to DraftKings. All right, so highest owned on DK pitcher wise is michael king 24 percent, and i gotta say i absolutely agree with this one i like it he is definitely one of my favorite pitchers on this slate when uh price is considered here i think scooball is in the best spot however michael king is in a very nice spot himself 9800 almost 23 point projection 2.3 x He's in a great spot and just been pitching amazing. 2.55 FIP over his last 20 starts with a 29% K rate is very, very solid. Over the last five, 3.26 FIP, 28% K rate, still nice. And now he's going against a uh, San Francisco Giants lineup that is hitting 213 versus righties their last 20 games. They do have a 180 ISO, so they're hitting the ball hard, but only a 294 Woba. So pretty much King just needs to not let people on base, and he has a good shot of having a very good game here. He's going to give up some hard contact, but he's only allowing 24% hard contact. So that is the strength of the Giants offense. King isn't allowing much of it, so I really do like the spot for Michael King. Definitely going to have a decent amount of him with a 27.6% combined K rate at 9,800. Nick Pavetta is next. Now, this is a tricky one. Pavetta, frankly, hasn't been pitching very good. 5.77 FIP over his last five starts, 26% K rate. Stat cast data looks absolutely awful. So, pretty hard to figure out what to do here. Now, he does have a 4.4 FIP over his last 20 with a 28% K rate. The thing with Pavetta is he has a giant ceiling when he gets it going, but he hasn't had it going lately. Do we expect a back, uh, bounce back here versus just an absolute awful Chicago White Sox lineup? Or does he give it up again? Uh, six innings, two earned runs, six Ks versus Detroit. He got crushed versus Colorado in Colorado, though, so we won't worry about that. He... Uh, did decently versus Seattle with six K or 10 Ks. So the strikeouts have still been there from game to game, but he's just letting some runs. And that's kind of the 
thing that Pavetta does. So I don't mind actually stacking some White Sox and some leverage, but I also don't mind having some Pavetta 2.3x values. Pretty nice, and that ceiling is uh, pretty hard to forget about. Four star alert score is looking mighty fine. Next, we got Cole Reagans, 9,400, 18% owned. Oops. And what do we got here? We have him against the Minnesota Twins. Now, Twins versus lefties, only hitting 234 over the last 20 games, but a 220 ISO 310 Woba. So they are hitting the ball hard. It's another spot where Reagans just needs to be careful and not let guys on base. The issue there is he is walking 3.6 batters per nine. So he has been allowing guys on base. Minnesota hits the ball hard. It is a little bit of a recipe for disaster there, but Reagans is a good enough pitcher that he can overcome that. He has big time upside, 32% K rate over the last five, 29% over the last 20. 3.23 FIP is extremely good. And even though it is a little bit of a tough matchup, I still like Reagan's in this spot. 27.4% combined K rate is similar to Michael King. And he's slightly cheaper. 2.1x value. I think he may not have quite the upside as King today, but he is in consideration. Next, Tariq Skubal. This is my favorite spot. I mean, Skubal unquestioned got to be the Cy Young in the AL 2.78 FIP over his last 20 2.4 over his last five 32% K rate over the last five and 29.5 over the last 20 stack cast data is fine now he's going against Oakland who has been a very hot team I actually saw a stat earlier today that I was shocked by it took uh Brent Rooker and Lawrence Butler versus Juan Soto and Aaron Judge together. And over the last like month or so, or since All-Star break, the A's combo has actually been better than the Yankees combo, which is just wild. However, Oakland A's struggling versus lefties. 26% K rate over the last 20 games, only hitting 219, 164 ISO, 302 Woba. It's struggle street for him. I don't mind trying to pick on Oakland with a lefty, and Scooble is the best lefty we got. And the uh, one game sample size that we got uh, in 2024, he had nine strikeouts, four, four earned runs, but nine Ks. Game before that in 2023, 10Ks in seven innings. I think it's a very interesting spot. Don't mind some Scooble. He is my favorite pitcher today with uh, King. Him and King are my favorite. Next, Zach Wheeler, 10K, 2X value. Look, I think his median projection sh possibly should be um, – a bit higher than it is here. I think there's a very good likelihood that he has a solid game is mid twenties. And there is a chance for one of his ceiling games. The, my the Marlins just aren't that good. They have been hitting decently lately 271 opponent uh, average here for the last 20 games, 334 Woba, but the long-term data on them is bad. 226 average, 124 ISO, 282 Woba. Those just aren't numbers I, you know, I'm really scared about. Now, some of the hitters like Norby, who is hitting very, very well, hasn't been in the majors long. So that 150 game sample size isn't really being factored in there, which definitely brings up, you know, their total. But all in all, I am interested in Wheeler in this spot. 25.4% combined K rate is solid upside. Uh, versus a team that only or has a very low implied total. The game is only at a seven over under. I uh, definitely am interested in Wheeler and, you know, there's not many better options than him. Next, we got Sean Manaya, 8,200. This guy has been pitching absolutely amazingly uh, pretty much since like all-star break. He has three games over 30 two mid-20s uh, 
you know, in there also. Now he's facing a Cincinnati offense that's decent, not striking out a lot, but uh, I'm a little bit intrigued. There's just a lot of pitchers on this slate, and I don't think we really need to go to Manaya. However, he is low owned and he has shown some real nice ceiling lately. So I don't mind having a little bit of him. Next, Max Freed versus Toronto. Now, Freed has been bad at home, averaging 52% less fantasy points at home. Uh, he is a very good pitcher, though, and it seems like he's getting his stuff uh, back after being on the IL. And he's in a good spot versus Toronto. Toronto's bad versus lefties, 209 average. Hitting the ball hard with 184 ISO, but 289 WOBA. So this is an interesting one. Don't totally know what to do with it in this spot. Uh, the other worry is there's a bunch of storms around Atlanta, so it's hard to really predict what's the weather going to do, if there's going to be a pop-up, a delay, whatnot. Uh, I don't mind some freed, but there's definitely some worries for me there. Now, my one of my lower own pivots that I am very interested in is value play Mitch Spence, 6,600, 1.8x. He has a FIP of 4.55 over his last 20 starts, 4.38 over his last five. So nothing to write home about. K rate is low. It's under 20, 19% over his last 20 starts. Stat cast data looks good, though, but the opponent, Tigers just are struggling versus righties and Spence is averaging 42% more fantasy points at home. If you go through he, his starts here, most of his at home starts, he's in the high teens or low twenties. And at 6,600, I will absolutely take that. I think there is absolutely a chance of him 20 plus and being this nice of a value, I'm pretty intrigued on that. You can take them, him, one of the higher uh, price guys, and still have a ton left over for bats if you want to pay up for bats also. So Spence is an interesting one to me at low ownership that I am definitely going to be interested in. I got to bring up Bryce Miller too. And the reason I want to is the home road splits of the Mariners pitchers need to be studied. Averaging 80% less fantasy points away, pretty much every pitcher has huge splits home and away for them, and it's just wild to me. Now, I don't really want to play Bryce Miller today. I just wanted to bring up that aspect. If uh, if you do want to play him, just make sure you know that because he is a good pitcher, just a lot worse when away. For Amber Valdez has been absolutely on fire lately. 2.22 FIP. 31% K rate, 3.13 FIP over his last 20, 25% K rate. Very uh, interested in him, but he is going against Arizona Diamondbacks, who is the hottest hitting team in baseball right now. Hitting 290 versus lefties, 152 ISO, 337 Woba, and they have had solid uh, appearances versus Arizona. Looks like three innings, one earned run, three Ks, only 75 pitches last time they saw him. However, that was not this year. Uh, I don't know what to do with Framber. Framber is going to be super low owned, but there's solid upside. He's averaging almost 27% more fantasy points at home, averaging 30.63 fantasy points per game in six home games. So very, very interested in Framber, even though it's a very tough spot. That's just your higher price pivot of uh, the day, I would say. Gosman, Gosman's a tough one. He is so up and down all season long. It's not a great spot for him, uh, but he is averaging 32% more fantasy points while away. Now the weather here, we do need to worry about. I don't mind some Gosman, but I also don't think we really need to go too wild on this slate with pitching. There's a lot of good options. Ownership's going to be spread around a bit. Now let's go over to FanDuel, see what we can uncover here for ownership-wise. All right, so Scooball, highest owned pitcher, 29%. Now he is 12K, just so high priced. That may take you off him a little bit. I do like him a lot, but 
12K is a lot. It will limit your bats a little bit. Next, Cole Reagans, 10.5, 36-point projection, 17% owned. I'm definitely in on Reagans. Don't mind uh, this spot and that price. 1.5K uh, less than Scooble is interesting. And then we have Zach Wheeler at 11.5, 16% owned. I'm really fine with any of these guys, but I do think my favorite is Michael King when you count price he is 2K less than Scooble. We have met like a six point, oh, seven point projection, seven and a half uh, point projection less, but he's way less owned and a five star alert score. I think King is very interesting and has solid upside. Scooble is definitely uh, <laughs> the top pitcher, though, just because of how amazing he has been for the entire season. And he's in a good matchup. So don't hate going that. That way, and you really don't need to get too crazy on FanDuel with pitching because we have, you know, four or five guys that are in solid spots. That ownership is going to get spread around. You're going to get Scooble probably being high owned and then everybody else, you know, 10 low teens, something like that. So I don't think we really need to get into the super low owned guys, but uh, Freed is an interesting one to me, as well as Mitch Spence, if you really want to get wild. My issue with going to Spence is that he's not going to give you, you know, 45 plus, and one of those higher owned guys can give you 60. So I just don't know if we can really give up that many real fantasy points uh, on this slate. Can it happen? Yeah, but it's a tall task. We would need Scooble, Reagans, Wheeler, King, uh, Pavetta, all to kind of get blown up. And the likelihood of five solid pitchers getting blown up is, you know, just not very high. So for that reason, I'm mostly going to just stick to the higher owned guys here. Maybe some freed because he can have that high own, high, uh, the, you know, big time point game there. So now let's get into some stacks, see what we got here. So our highest ceiling, we got Oakland versus Scooble. Oakland's been crushing the ball, but not so much versus lefties. Now it is a big time leverage stack. Something happens to Scooble, he gets lit up a little bit early. The bullpen behind him isn't great. There's at least a path and game theory wise, it makes some sense to have a very small amount of Oakland. Next, we got Arizona versus Framber Valdez. Arizona's been just red hot. So for that reason alone, you got to consider them. But Framber has also been red hot. Not sure which one wins today. Dodgers versus Matthew Boyd. Matthew Boyd has actually been a very good pitcher. 3.62 FIP over his last five starts. Don't really love picking on him but Dodger offense can get to anybody. Now, highest owned. Highest owned is only 45%, so do not care about hitting ownerships. Even if you're going to go with Scooball, you can absolutely take the high owned guys because 45% is pretty low owned. It's a 12-game slate. Hitters, ownerships are going to get so spread out that uh, it's not that big of a deal. So Phillies versus Edward Cabrera, 5.25 FIP. FIP of five over the last 20. Definitely interested in going with that. Uh, and Mr. Schwarbaum has been just incredibly hot lately. So Philly does have some interest. Boston versus Davis Martin. I'm fine going here. I don't absolutely love it, though. We, are, we have a little bit of cooler tempers, temperatures in Boston and winds coming in. That does affect hitting at that stadium quite a bit. Which also brings me to the back to Pavetta, where Pavetta is in a better spot. Uh, likely less home runs given up uh, in that game. So Pavetta does look a little more interesting versus a bad offense and uh, high strikeout upside. Texas versus uh, Sam Aldegiri. I mean, he has a FIP of seven, so you got to consider them, right? And Dodgers popping up versus Boyd again. Our highest projected, we got uh, Dodgers and Philadelphia. I do prefer Philly over the Dodgers in this spot. Mets 
versus Fernando Cruz is popping a little bit. Fernando Cruz has been very good, but he's only working a couple innings, and then you're getting to the bullpen. So I think the Mets are a little interesting in that spot. Now our highest value stacks, we got White Sox versus Pavetta. Makes all the sense in the world to me. You got a volatile pitcher who is a little bit higher owned. Uh, White Sox are cheap. So for that reason, I'm in a little bit. However, it's not good hitting weather. So that's one worry. I mean, White Sox aren't very good to begin with. And then you add in, you know, hitting weather going against them. And it's hard to uh, really want to go there. But it is a nice leverage stack. Now, if we click the teams here, our highest implied run total is Boston versus Davis Mark Martin. Uh, don't mind going there. The bullpen behind Martin is bad. Then you got Dodgers versus Boyd at 4.9, Texas 4.9, Baltimore 4.6, San Diego 4.5. Mason Black hasn't been good. The bullpen behind him is just kind of meh. Makes some sense to want to go there. Uh, Houston 4.4 versus Brandon Paft and Braves 4.2, Mets 4.2. I want to bring up the fact that Cleveland is down at 4.1, but versus Landon Knack, who has a 4.73 FIP and a FIP of five over the last five games. I think they are interesting, as is uh, Royals and Zebby Martin, who has a 5.6 FIP in that bullpen behind him. Isn't great. And then the Angels, uh, Gerson Garabito, 5.83 FIP over his last five starts, FIP of five over his last 20 I don't mind trying to pick on him with that bullpen behind him being absolutely terrible. And the Angels just had a huge uh, game. Below that, you're looking at pretty much low-owned, anything-can-happen ones. I don't mind Philly. After Philly, I'm kind of mixed about them. Uh, Seattle's been hitting decently, but Fetty is nice. St. Louis, kind of interesting because of how much worse Bryce Miller is away. White Sox, you can obviously consider, as we've talked about. And then everybody else is pretty much just a leverage stack. And I don't love going there, but you absolutely can have uh, some of them. Anything can happen in baseball in one day. Now, that'll do it for us today, guys. We will be back next week. Good luck. Let's make some money. And I'll see you all later. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to you later. Peace.